Hi friends, welcome to today's video. My name's Stephanie and today I'm going to be showing you an older Mooncat collection called Heavy is the Crown. So this five piece collection launched way back in 2022. It was one of Mooncat's very first collections after they rebranded from Live Love Polish and it has always been one of my favorites. I just am such a sucker for this color story but I will save more of my thoughts at the end after some comparisons. For now, let's just get into the swatches. The first shade in the collection is Venus Flytrap, and this is a dark, hot pink, linear holographic. So I don't know if it's just me, but I would almost call this like a magenta-leaning hot pink. I definitely think it's very blue-leaning. Maybe on the first coat, it really reads as a true hot pink, but when you build it up in two, it does deepen it a little bit. But obviously, as a certified pink lover, I still am going to really love this shade. This one had a fantastic formula that was just smooth as butter to apply it gave really great coverage on the first coat but it was a little bit sheer but because of how dark it was i only needed to for full opacity and as an additional note if it wasn't obvious i did swap out the brushes in these because since this is an older collection mine had the older brushes and i don't like those up next we have Not Today Satan, and this is a light pink linear holographic. So no surprise, this one is my favorite from the collection. I'm sure you can probably tell from the fill line in the bottle. It is just one of my most used mooncap polishes. It is just such a really pretty, delicate, dainty, light pink shade. This one had another flawless formula that was relatively even coverage on the first coat. It was just a little bit sheer in places, but Again, I only needed two for full opacity, and yeah, I just love this one. I have no words other than you need this if you love pink. Up next, we have Boa Constrictor, and this one is a warm, rich brown linear holographic. I definitely always thought this one was a little bit of a random shade to throw in with the pinks and purples. I honestly think the shade Fake Halo, which is more of that like golden champagne linear hollow, would have worked a lot better instead of this one. But as far as a brown linear hollow goes, this one is absolutely gorgeous. Again, just like the other polishes in this collection, this one had really great coverage on the first coat where it was very even. It was just a little bit sheer, so it almost had that really warm orangey red leaning color to it. But doing a second coat really deepens it up and matches the color to the bottle. The next shade is Shattered Glass, and this is a lilac linear holographic. This is definitely another favorite of mine from this collection. I just am always going to be drawn to the slightly lighter colors. There's just something so beautiful about this shade of purple. I just adore it so, so much. This one had another super nice and easy to work with formula, but I found that this one was even more sheer than the light pink, but I still did get it opaque on two coats on my slightly longer nails, so I don't think most people would need a third for this shade. Of course, it is going to depend on your application and your preference. Maybe in certain lighting, you might be able to see some nail line, but I think this is a solid two coater and it is so pretty. And rounding out the collection, we have Anti-Fragile, and this is a super dark violet linear holographic. No surprise, the formula on this one was just as fantastic as the other polishes, and because this was a slightly darker shade, it had really great coverage on the first coat, but I still wouldn't call it a one-coater exactly. Maybe if you had shorter nails and do slightly thicker coats, you could get away with it in one coat because it is really pigmented, but I ended up just doing two for my swatch to get it full coverage. Even though this isn't a shade that I would just wear on its own because I feel like it's a little too bold for me personally, I still really love it especially with this collection and using it as a gradient or just in a skittle. It is just so good. And here's the full collection worn as a skittle in two coats each. I have the two purples on my pinky and ring finger and then the two pinks on my middle and index and the brown on my thumb. So obviously in the sunlight, they are gonna be super sparkly, super holographic, and you do kind of lose that when you move into shade, but I still really like the colors. There is some sparkle to them, but I totally get why people don't love holographics when you're not in direct sunlight. 
And here is the collection lineup. I don't know what it is about this lineup that I just find so satisfying. I mean, obviously I'm gonna love pinks and purples, but even the brown in here, it just feels like such a solid anchoring shade. So it kind of feels like royalty, but make it a little bit darker. And now getting into comparisons, we're starting with the Venus Flytrap and looking at it next to Holo Taco's Hot Wire Pink from the Electric Hollows collection a couple years ago. And that one I would call more of a true hot pink shade. You could see it's not as dark or purple leaning as Venus Flytrap. So I thought maybe it would be worth also showing it next to Holo Taco's Magenta Jelly from the OG Rainbow collection. I was kind of surprised to see how similar these two looked in the bottle where I just thought they were going to be exact dupes, but on the nail, you can definitely tell them apart. I'm wearing two coats of each and I would say that Magenta Jelly is definitely the darkest of the three. Hot Wire Pink is the most true hot pink and Venus Flytrap is kind of like the perfect in-between shade of these two. I also noticed that Venus Flytrap had a bit of a stronger holographic flare than the two Holo Taco shades, at least under my ring light. Then for Not Today Satan, I of course have to show this next to Holo Taco's Toe Beans from last year's Royal Debut Trio. That one is a super light, icy pink linear hollow, but it does have a pink shimmer in here as well. It is just notoriously hard to capture. But pink shimmer aside, I still wouldn't call these dupes because Toe Beans is a little bit lighter or just more silvery in color. So I figured I could show Not Today Satan next to this really old Cirque polish called Frosted Cherry. Well, it's not that old. It's just from a couple of years ago, but it was from the Smarties collab that they did. This one is another light pink that might look similar in the bottle, but it is relatively warmer and a lot more noticeably different on the nail. I will also say that Frosted Cherry has a bit of a weaker holographic effect, especially under my ring lighting, but in direct sunlight, all of these hollows are going to be super intense. And here's Not Today Satan next to Mooncat's Robotica from the Cyber Set two years ago. It launched during Black Friday. It was a limited edition collection. It's an icy pink linear holographic that is filled with this aqua minty blue kind of shimmer. Definitely one of my favorite pinks that Mooncat has ever done, but sadly it's not around anymore. And unfortunately, Not Today Satan is not a dupe for it either. And lastly, I wanted to show Not Today Satan next to at least a photo of Holo Taco's Pink Fizz because that's another light pink linear holo, but that one is a lot cooler toned where it's almost bordering on purple. In a similar vein, here is Boa Constrictor next to a photo of a Holo Taco's Burnt Bridges from the Dark Rainbow Collection. I think just from this specific photo, it looks like Burnt Bridges is darker, but honestly, I think these are dupes. Then for Shattered Glass, I wanted to show this next to Cirque Colors Groovy Grape from that same Smarties collab as Frosted Cherry. I'm not sure how well you can tell in the bottle, but I would say that Groovy Grape leans a little bit lighter or just maybe cooler toned. So there is a slight difference in color. It might be even harder to tell apart in direct sunlight when you see the intense hollow flare and it kind of obscures the color a little more. But yeah, I would say if you missed out on Groovy Grape, Shattered Glass is a great alternative, especially since it has a stronger hollow flare even when not in direct sunlight. So I also wanted to show Shattered Glass next to Mooncat's Electric Sheep, which was from that same Cyber Set collection a couple of Black Fridays ago. This one is a super icy lavender linear hollow with this really intense gold shimmer, but unsurprisingly, these are nowhere near dupes. Electric Sheep is just a lot lighter and a bit cooler tone, so it kind of has a silvery blue sort of color. And again, here is Shattered Glass next to a photo of Holo Taco's Lavender Syrup, which is the light purple from the collection. But as you can see, it's definitely a lot cooler toned, so it's very blue leaning. And lastly, for Anti Fragile, I of course had to show this next to Holo Taco's Purple Slushy. This was the purple from the OG Rainbow Collection, and it definitely is pretty similar, at least in the bottle. I would say on the nail, Holo Taco leans more like a true purple, whereas Anti Fragile leans a little bit more violet, where there's a blue undertone to it. And like in some of the other comparisons, the Holo was just a lot stronger in Mooncat than it was in Holo Taco. So, not dupes. So that wraps up my swatches and comparisons for Mooncat's Heavy is the Crown collection.
I really hope you enjoyed taking this look back on one of their older collections. Even though it's your basic like pinks and purples, I still really loved this set. It is just so, so pretty. And I never was much of a linear hollow person, so I just enjoyed having these in my collection. And even though this is an older release, these are all still available. So as always, I will have Mooncat's website linked down below if you want to pick any of them up. Originally, I did want to do a video on their Ode to Luna collection, which was their very first debut collection under Mooncat, but unfortunately at the beginning of the year they announced that two of the shades were going to be retiring, which was so heartbreaking because I had shared one of them recently in my favorite magnetics video. So instead, be on the lookout for a video on their Technicolor Dreams set, which came out a couple of years ago. It's their bright pastel collection. Make sure to let me know any and all thoughts that you have down below so we can chat about it. But thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.